welcome to a special edition of the Helium Boys podcast. Do not let your eyes fool you. This is not tunnel vision. Corporate would not give us our own wraparound for the Helium Boys. <laughs> I'm surprised they let us do this. But yeah. we have a very special guest, the first guest in the history of the Helium Boys podcast. Yeah. The incomparable yeah, yeah. linebacker, Eric Gentry. Eric, it, how are it, you uh, doing? Thank you for coming on. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. My guy is here. I'm feeling good. Feeling good going into Michigan week. He's feeling great. We're feeling great that you're on the show. We're going to have some fun, EG. Sure. I don't want to make this a boring podcast interview. You have personality. Nah, I'm I'm I know it's there. Yeah, I know yeah. it's there. We want to have more conversation with you. So that's what we're going to try to do. But Shotgun, I know we're big fans of the way this guy plays on the field. And we were so lucky to have him come on. Thank you to House of Victory for bringing mm -hmm. Eric Gentry on. The first guest in the Helium Boys had to be a big one. So we had to get the biggest linebacker that we can find in Man. Eric Gentry. <laughs> Yeah, we had to get EG on because you know we we get a chance to see EG a little bit behind the 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 visor. He doesn't wear a visor, but behind the helmet a little bit on the sidelines before the game. He's got so much personality that you don't necessarily see in in other interviews. But we think we'll open him up a little bit here uh, because you know we, we have a good relationship with EG. And he was so great to come on. We really appreciate House of Victory for allowing us. But I had to I had to reach out and say, Ryan. We, you know, you got to let us get EG for, for a House of Victory interview. So thanks to House of Victory for, for putting this together. And thanks to EG for taking the time to join us. For sure. I appreciate y'all. Eric, I'm going to start off easy. You go by Eric Gentry. You go by EG. Obviously, the Angry Giraffe has become a nickname for you. I know <laughs> you're you're cool with it. You're cool right. with it. It's not maybe the top nickname right. on your list. Definitely not. <laughs> but, but you've embraced it. You have For the sure. unicorn, which I know you embrace a little bit more, but I have to ask. I found two other nicknames that they used to call you. The Philly Freak. Yeah. I feel like I want to bring that one back. That one feels like it's the right season to bring it back. And yeah. Spider-Man. I found an old article calling you Spider-Man. Uh, How do you feel about that. that nickname? I remember that. My coach, I forgot when my coach said that. When my coach gave me that, my coach said that. But I wasn't really going with it. It was, it was chill for him, but nah. nah. The Philly Freak, I liked though. It was fire because, yeah, it was fire at, because when I came to ASU, they held on to it. And then it really changed only when I got here that, like, people just stopped, like, even seeing it. Which one do you prefer the most? EG. Just, just <laughs> keep it simple. Keep it the EG. initials. <laughs> EG is definitely, I like that. Especially um, even when fans come and come talk to me. I had a kick, hop out the car. Yesterday, we was coming from practice, and he was like, EG. That was fire. That was fire. <laughs> then somebody hop out the car, the angry giraffe. It's like, hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Yeah, that I feel like we're about like, to make make a trip to the zoo, if that's the case. For sure. Yeah, like, that feels like they're just frying you up. So I, I know people have said that I created the angry giraffe nickname. I don't have a recollection of that. I know multiple people have said I started. I don't think that's true. I'm about to say, I don't have an issue with it, <laughs> by the way. Like, whoever made it, ain't no trip. No, not at all. It's just not, uh, let's just say it's not the name I would prefer. <laughs> well, we've seen a resurgence in your EG being called out and Eric Gentry being called out a lot on the broadcast. Yeah. You've been all over the field so far this season. I just went back and rewatched every snap of yours from the Utah State game, and I feel like there was only maybe four or five where you're not – either involved in the action or at least at the pile. You're just moving from sideline to sideline. You seem to be everywhere. What's enabling you to have such an impact right now to where you are sideline to sideline right now and you're just, just kind of involved in everything? Honestly, man, I give so much credit to Coach Entz and, and, and D-Lim, but really Coach Entz and, and Coach Ball definitely of telling me, like, a lot of stuff is pre-snap indications. And um, it's a lot of behaviors that people have that they give away pre-snap, even from your eyes to your footwork, to different stuff like that, to the weight on your hands. So it's a lot of stuff that that obviously people already know if you you know already film studying, but it don't matter how much you know it, it's your behaviors. It's what you naturally gonna do, no matter if I say that's what you do or not, like that's what you're gonna do. So a lot of stuff Coach Ends helped me with pre-snap that really helped me. Like if you know what to do pre-snap, you got everything down. You don't need to worry about you know, what your job is and any of that. You're looking at what the offense is doing. Started thinking about what you got to do, so. 
you mentioned Film Room just now, and I did want to ask you about the Film Room because our last interview with you on the Parasol Podcast with Ryan and Connor, there are multiple times where you said, oh, I saw this on film, or I was really excited because I saw this on film. You seem like a Film Room junkie just listening to you talk about yeah. it. So where did that come from? Where did you start picking up these film room habits. Is that something you got from Antonio Pierce when you first got in? Obviously, he's come from the NFL background. Where did yeah. your film room habits start? It's crazy because definitely Antonio Pierce. Like, when I talk pre-snap indications, like, it started from AP. Like, I mean, him and Coach Marv was, like, two defensive, like, masterminds, especially helping me come in. And nothing was important to me. Like, nothing else was important, but it was just coming in and playing football. And that's how it was, like. You know, I didn't go out. I didn't do anything. I just was in a crib watching, watching films. And it helped me so much now because it becomes second nature. And so I got E-Man before in fall camp of me and him talking about his behaviors and stuff that we used to call out during fall camp. And so he changed up and he told me how much it helped him. So, I mean, it. I see how much it helped with the team, but definitely helping with me in general was like the film room so much. I'm about to go. Actually, watch some more film after this. So yeah, you know that for real, for real, just treating nothing, treating it like nothing else matter but football. So you know, if you treat it like that, you know, and you realize a lot of behaviors and stuff, it's going to happen. So I give a lot of credit to AP for sure. Most of the credit, all the all of the credit actually for me seeing the beginning of like pre snap indications from film. So speaking of AP, what was it like playing in front of him, getting to see him before the game in Vegas that oh. went over LSU, knowing he was there? Playing in front of the Raiders organization, you know, knowing that they, they got some scouts and stuff there as well to watch that game in their home stadium. What, what was that? Uh, what was that like for you? It was a full go around. I, I, I ain't posted on Instagram yet, but I wanted to post something about that. Like it's a full full turnaround, three sixty of uh, just talking to somebody from him being a defensive coordinator and being a guy that I looked up to as a successful person in general to getting a head coaching job it was like man i was just it, it it took it like that and he talked to me about man i'm gonna get the d coordinator job and he skipped that and he went to head coach so <laughs> man talking to him for a couple of minutes before the pregame was 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 crazy it was fire definitely helped me going into the game too um wanting to satisfy him while playing so yeah going back to that film room stuff you know obviously ap the uh, Coach Marv, the the NFL background. Danton Lynn obviously comes with an NFL background. Has yeah. your film habits? Have you picked up anything from him? Just being around him in the film room as well. Um, man, D. Lynn is just such a open book for us. Like he treats us like open books. He let us know like, what did you see? What you tell me? What you like? What you think on this? Tell me like, you like this play call? Like he's such like care about what we want and you know understanding what it is like. He understand that, like, and AP did the same thing for us of just being like, you know, what you see on this, what you see, like him trusting the older guys and understanding, like, it don't matter how much you could coach, like, your players going to be get the best view of what's going on. So, man, um, yeah, him just treating us like an open book with that, like, it, it, that just helps so much for me in general, for sure. Has that led to you having kind of different responsibilities this season? Are you being asked to do different things? I mean, obviously you're playing some inside, you're playing on the edge when you guys have three linebackers out there, but are there certain things that you're just being asked to do differently? It's crazy, Coach. And say to me every, almost like, definitely every Tuesday when we got a heavy load of just like running and everything, he'd be like, you good? Like, everything good with you? Like, you know, you're running, you got a lot of load, like you're doing this, you're doing that, you're good. I'm like, yeah, I'm chilling. Like, I'm, I, I'm trying to go somewhere. Like, you're good. He like, man, you crazy. Like, you just talking to me. But, like, man, Coach Entz helped. Like, it was already, like I said, me playing for AP. Like, it was already in my head of playing, like, you know, Sam and Will linebacker, just playing different spots. So, um, then coming here and then, um, you know, with D-Lynn and everything, it just did, it was the same thing. Like, just seeing how we go from – I went from this position to this position in spring and then seeing how, like, you know, I got the hang of it in the summer and it was just full go and full camp, so. I'm glad you brought up Coach Entz because your relationship has been one of the great storylines of this offseason with this new coaching staff. It seems like he's really rejuvenated you and every time you talk about Coach Entz, you have this big smile on your face. The one you yeah. have, you're on your face right now. So just something I've observed <laughs> in practice is Coach Entz's 
always coaching throughout drills or reps. He's always giving little things here and there. It could be small, could spend a lot of time on it, but he's always saying something. And when you're talking to him and he's talking to you, you are locked in to what he's saying. So I, I kind of want to ask, what makes Coach Entz a good teacher in your eyes? He told me something like, football time is football time. Time to be who you are and whatever you do else is the time after that. Like football time is football time. So we have that time of just joking and having fun and being 100% invested and locked in into what we got going on during the football time. An open book, just to be honest, the same way D. Lynn treaters, man. Just Coach Ince, just like every every day, he just he just so honest with me. We so honest with each other. He's so honest with the players. He let everybody know. Like I think just that fair coaching of letting everybody know when they're wrong, letting everybody know when they're right, calling everybody on their BS, letting somebody know when they're doing really good. Like he don't he just he just do it the right way. I feel like uh, and being a role model to us, to be honest of what to do like and you can't have nothing but respect for somebody who's already previously won like no matter what level you win at no matter if, if it was juco to power five like a winner is a winner in general at first i mean in general so man, coach Ince helped us so much like and you know like i said him being a winner he just knows how to win he knows what the players need he know when to let go on the players he know how to let loose and joke with us he just got that head coach mindset and it, and it's re it was really needed for us at that position for sure so looking at the at this situation i feel like i was in something similar in college i played baseball in college small school when i was in college we went through something where we had a really bad year it led to a coaching change when the new guy came in it, it kind of changes everything right so mm -hmm. for me though when our new coach was hired there's still a little bit of skepticism that was like you know, will we really be able to turn everything around? I knew we had some talent, those type of things. But until we started seeing some gains, and then suddenly it was like, oh, shit, I forgot. We we are good. We can be good. With this new staff, when did you know that you guys could really start turning things around? Was there an early meeting, spring practice, maybe not even to the fall? When when did you realize, like, oh, okay, okay, this this could be this could be legit. We could do some real stuff this year. I'll say probably fall camp, to be honest. Um Spring was good also, but you got to legitimize, legitimize, whatever. I don't know where that is, but you got to be, you got to see if some legitimate is soon as you be able to go into fall camp and before the season start. Like that's when you see everything come together. You see what it is and yeah, fall camp, to be honest, we had a lot of time of spending with each other more than anything else. Like you spend, we spend more time with each other than we do with family when we do it anybody else like so I feel like for sure fall camp and it helped me see you know the coaches also like being having another fall camp another time with just the coaches and being around a coach and so it, that was nice I feel like fall camp really helped us a lot I feel like we as a team became really close but as a defense 100 percent sure we became even more close with our coaches during fall camp how much time we spend with each other just joking and then just learning so much. The coach is telling us how much they impressed with us and it, us seeing it, you know, making it happen. But it's really no time to be satisfied, though. Like, nobody is satisfied. So everybody is hungry. And I feel like during this time, like, shoot, we don't – you got to be, like, desperate. Like, I don't know, I can't really explain it, but, like, Everybody trying to win. If you really trying to win, so our coaches trying to win. They desperate to win. We are too. So if they both met with the right preparation, sure, like, we far. You get one win, you, you're you're not satisfied. You just keep like, oh, okay, now I want it more. I want the next one that much more. Is that what you mean? For sure. Especially like we just talked this week and sat down as a defense, and for sure talked about like, hey, we gotta even like go even crazier this week, like. Like, come on, like, it's, it's to another level, but shoot, it's belief behind it. So, shoot, we just waiting on Saturday. Eric, I have a question I've been wanting to ask you since last season. There's this thing you do with the linebackers in pregame where you guys walk around the entire field together. Usually you're kind of in the front. Where did that start, and what is the, uh, what is the purpose of that, or what is the mentality 
you're building in doing that? So, especially with college football, like, for me, for sure, like, the time, it, it went by quick, fast, like, so, you know, me and Shane used to talk about, like, you know, things we wanted to do when we first started here, and we used to walk around, but I used, we used it, we used it as a time to just walk around and get ourselves together, you feel me, make sure we good and calm down, but before the first time that we walked out there, we was like, man, just, like, cherish it, just realize, like, that you could do everything you want to do. You could be who you want to be. You could be the man in the arena off of the, a decision you make, like, of wanting to do it today. So, like, just being able to cherish the moment. Like, we always say it, and constantly you could say you cherish in a moment, but you don't cherish the moments for real, for real, that you really don't even talk about cherishing. Like, you just doing what you got to do. So, we just walk around. I try not to put my headphones in. I mean, I try to put, I try not to have my headphones in, but when I do have my headphones in, I'm locked in too. But I just try to have my uh, headphones off and just look around the stadium, just be, just see what it is, see what we playing in, especially in away games. Like I love away games further, cause, more because it's like we playing in a away stadium. It's a new place. Like we get to be who we are. Like get a chance to take it all in. You get a huge venue this weekend. You're going to go to the big house. Um, yeah. Is this a place that you had looked forward to playing in the past? I mean, being from Philadelphia, that is kind of big 10 country. Um, is, is this a stadium that you kind of looked, looked forward to, you know, potentially playing in growing up or anything like that? It's crazy. Cause I always say like, if I would have got an offer from Penn state, my freshman year to probably my junior year, I would have committed like, I was really thinking, like, man, I'm going to Penn State. I'm going to be here. Like, this is the place I want to be at. And so, um, obviously, like, you know, things didn't go right when I got, uh, you know, into college. Like, shoot, they ain't offer or whatever. But I always was like, yeah, I'm going to play at Michigan. But then, like, shoot, it died down. I wasn't tripping about it. And then um, I came here. We go to the Big Ten. And it really wasn't on some, like, oh, we playing at Michigan. It's going to be crazy. I really was like, oh, we play a good team at they like home. See, like I'm trying, I want to go against the best team. So like, can't nobody say nothing. Like we're going against comp the best comp. Like, no, like, for real, for real. That's how I feel. You play in the defending national champions. Uh, you know, obviously a, a team that w was so good last year. I struggled a little bit earlier this season, but you struggled a little bit last season. This season, though, you you've been playing tremendous. What's something you feel like you're doing much better so far this season? Is there something you worked on the off season yourself, or something the new defense staff help make help you make adjustments on? What's one one thing that you can point to and say I'm doing this a lot better than I was last year? Um, I feel like uh, just giving 100 percent into uh, the coaches and being fully invested into like what's being taught to me. Um, and so I, I really could just give the credit to the coaches, just being in the right position, them using me the right way. You know, D-Lynn and, and Coach Entz and even Coach Henny, really all the coaching staff, <laughs> Buki, Ball, like all of them just coming together and really just seeing like what we could do. And you know what I mean? Like see what it is. Coach Nua, Coach Skyler, like all of them in general, just really seeing like what's the best thing we could do to make our defense better and they feel like using me in different spots for for right now is really what was making us the best you so I really get a credit to the coaches I don't feel like coach Ba gets enough love or any love at that fact so I'm gonna take this opportunity to ask you what has coach Ba played an impact in that linebacker room I talked to coach Ba in an all season about goals for the year looked over my last season and things I needed to work on and everything I was um, weak at and what I felt like I needed to improve on. It. And so I remember I was driving in the car. We was driving in the car and Coach Ball dropped me off. I was like, Coach Ball, like, you really think I could be, like, as good as you say I am? Like, you know what I mean? And he was like, only if you don't think so. And then I was – he just walked off. We talked. And then just all the off season. Man, well, he drove off or whatever. We talked, and then during the whole offseason, man, Coach Ball just helped us more with my pass rush more than anything. Like, he just showed me a lot of stuff in the pass rush that, like, indicators of what they do. And now, like, my breakdown of o lineman is so crazy with passion, and it's because of him. And he helped me so much with my footwork 
of knowing footwork matters so much and what you pass rush in. And so a lot of stuff Coach Ball showed us was just like, boom. And then people were going crazy about that drill. Like, that was the first time Ball did a drill. So he was like, hold up, I'm making y'all go crazy. So he was like, I put y'all in a bad spot. Like, no. But no, Coach Ball helped us so much, man. And we was doing one-on-ones. And I used to almost n- never lose a one-on-one in pass rush. And so I got the confidence so much while doing it, and it was because of Coach Ball. And then I started pass rushing against the old lineman, and it started to be the same way. And we was just getting good work in. And, and Coach Ball just helped me so much. And people don't understand that for sure. Coach Ball does a lot, does a lot, whether it's with the scouts, whether it's with us, and whether it's with the pass rush in general. Like him, Buki, and Skyler, and teammates, they work hella hard to just help us like in general. A fellow Georgia boy there, Coach Ball, so you know, got to give him some love. Um, sure. you, you talk about your pass rush moves. You showed that off uh, getting the first sack. Uh, did you have to you, did you rub it in to, to some of the defensive linemen? You, you, you had to let me come on a blitz and get one. I actually, <laughs> I actually didn't even say nothing about it until D. Lynn came and said so, too. He's like, E.G., all of them talking, but you got the first sack, right? I'm like, yeah, D. Lynn. So, um, nah, I uh, – we got way more sex that's going to that's gonna happen and more opportunities, but it definitely felt good to get that. And we definitely was having competitions in fall camp of productive, productiveness and everybody who was getting the most sex, the most TFLs. Like, we was definitely have a good – we was showing each other film and everything. Like, no, you ain't have a better mood and we used to time each other. It was a lot of, lot of stuff like that. But, man, like, that, that's helping a lot with us for sure now. Well, let's just say the offensive lineman from Utah State won't be putting that on his film anywhere because uh, you made him look pretty bad on that one. Braylon Shelby also get a little get a little love there because he had the initial pressure, kind of put him in your put the quarterback in your lap. Um, but you know, you, you give the celebration. You know, what's the uh, you know the shrug um, celebration? You know, can you get can you give us some insight on that, or is that is it not PG? We always have to ask if anything's PG here. Uh, yeah, let's just I don't know I don't really. <laughs> I just be doing it. I don't really be knowing. That's just how I be feeling sometimes, man. <laughs> you need the uh, you need the NIL shirt with you doing that, the silhouette. Yeah, I it. definitely need that. Wingspan to this. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you, need no, it. you need it, man. You need it all. I see you crawling out on the field too. You, you just I saw you uh, uh, the other day. People don't know that. I learned that from John Jones. I watched actually. That's somebody I watched. I watched a lot of greats this offseason, for sure. Like, MJ, John Jones, uh, Kobe. I was watching Kobe Doggery. But a lot of stuff like that are, like, tendencies and obsession and want to be great. But, um, man, yeah, yeah, I'll be doing that because shout out to John Jones, man. I think he cold. Is there a, is there a quote or a saying from a great that you that you kind of maybe have taken to heart John this Jones. year or, or something that John really – the butterflies in your stomach are just information. Hmm. Yeah. That's a thinker there. Uh. Yeah, that was fire. John Jones said that. It was real. He told me, ex- he, well, not told me, but he said the explanation for it and everything, but it was, it was fire. EG, we're seeing you all over the field. We're seeing you pass rush, cover, drop, you know, doing different things. Is there a way you would define your role in this, this defense? How would you define it? Just because you're being used in so many different assets, can you define your role? Just a football player. I can't even say it. Like, literally, literally to win, I will play anything you want me to play. Like, dead serious. Like, I just want to win. Like, I don't want – I just want to be the best. The best. And so, shoot, like, whatever. Literally. So, whatever I got to do to play. And shit, to me, whatever I could do to help win, like, for real, for real. But for sure, on defense, like, yeah, I just play defense. <laughs> well, I'm just here, here, wherever you see me at. <laughs> you're, you're talking about defense and you're talking about you just want to play we do know in your high school days you were a tight end played a little quarterback uh, <laughs> as well i think that was pre-high school but i have to yeah. know as a former tight end myself what was eric gentry the tight end like on the field uh i actually i started my first scrimmage as a wide receiver in high school <laughs> and then i went straight to jv the next game <laughs> The next scrimmage. And then I went and got a pick six, two games in JV, back-to-back games, and I didn't play JV no more. Well, I did play JV still, but my coach was like, yeah, you stick in the defense. But I played high school. I, play, I'm, I, mean, I played tight end my junior year, 
And it would just be on some like sneak, catch the ball, just some like small stuff. But I, I really just started focusing on, I used to just focus on playing receiver until probably my junior year. Like I didn't play high school my senior year. So my junior year really was the year of me being like, yeah, like I could, I could do this. Like I could play defense, but <laughs> I definitely was, I got a rivals tape that I regret of still having to this day of going out there and receiver. <laughs> I was like, well, I, re- I would I want to say I regret it because I was young. I, it was a good opportunity for sure. But I just looking back at it, it's just so cringe, man, just seeing myself at receiver. Cause I definitely was not comfortable. I get more and more comfortable with like athleticism on my body more and more every year. But like obviously that comes with time of getting more coordinated and everything. But um for sure back then, man, my freshman year was a, a cringe year but to to play receiver, but <laughs> I was out there trying to get my offers, so I, I can't. I can't hate on the grind. I think freshman year for everyone was a cringe year. Let's not. Nah, let's for not sure. Joke. I think for sure everybody. <laughs> everybody. Everybody. Chris, what are you talking about? That was that was the height for me. It all oh, went downhill from oh, yeah, freshman okay. year. So. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and to confirm, eg, you wore number eighty-eight in high school. I wore eight, and then one of our we live in a hood, so one of our jer- our jerseys got stolen. <laughs> they came into our facility, took our jerseys, so they took our jerseys, so I didn't have the other number eight, so I had to stick to 88 for when we wore black. I just wanted to ask, because I wore number 88, so I feel nah, like Ah, shout out to you, though. I'm, I wore 88, too, though, so shout out to you, nah, for sure. <laughs> Eight's Chris is number. excited now. It's my lucky sure. number. I just had to for double sure. it up. I just had to double it up. <laughs> did you have a favorite receiver? Uh, for you favorite? to wear? I, I loved watching Jason Witten. Uh, Ooh, tight end. 82. Jason Wynn was cold. Yeah. Cold yeah. white boy, as uh, yeah, I like was, to say. Cold. <laughs> About John Humphrey, who went to Stanford. <laughs> um, I, I was a Randy Moss fan. I tried to wear 84 in my high school. I was like, no, no, you're not no. allowed to wear that. <laughs> it's crazy. I was in 707. My coach, I actually, my coach was like, who do you look up to, like, as a receiver? I was like, yeah, like, I look up to Calvin Johnson, Julio Jones. My coach was like, look, stop. <laughs> let's, let's I was like, <laughs> But I had to be in like sixth grade. He said this. Like, <laughs> he said no. To say that to a sixth, grade, he was like, "Bro, just that's tired. That's stop it, bro. It's quite dumb. tremendous. Like, tremendous. That humbled me. That humbled me as a young. That was my first time. Be like, shit, man. I don't know. Well, we know that you got some hands out there. I know you can run a little bit from being a tight end, being a receiver. So well, I gotta ask you. So what happened? Why are you letting Easton Easton take the the pick away from you? <laughs> I ain't gonna say I, I ain't gonna say like like I was hating. I was so happy he got the pick for sure. I did I did want the pick though for sure one hundred percent. But that's my boy though. I ain't tripping about it. <laughs> um, man, I don't even know why I waited. I saw it and everything. I should have just jumped up because he jumped up. I should have just jumped, showed my vertical, got up there. But nah, nah my boy got it. I'm so proud of him. Yeah, he needed that. He needed that. He needed that. He needed to get that. That's for sure. Sure. He put a lot of work in. Definitely a gift for him. So I'm taking it to TikTok a little bit for this next question. But there's a guy on TikTok who just roams the streets of New York. And he just walks up to people that look confident. And he asks Mm. them, what makes you confident? E.G., I feel like he would walk up to you if he saw you in New York. So I have to ask. I have to steal his question, which is simple. But what makes you confident? Oh, um, that I didn't have a lot of confidence last year. Hmm, that I was, I was very down on how much, how good I could play and what I did. Um, I only, I played in the cow game. Obviously, it was a blessing to be able to start in that game. But um, definitely not having a lot of confidence in how I felt in my play last year. And it showed, I felt like. And so um, this offseason was definitely a belief offseason of just belief by not saying it, but doing it, putting in a lot of work, sacrificing, and trying to still sacrifice now. So, one in particular that was pushing you, or is that all internal? Nah, definitely internal. Like, um, nah, definitely internal. Internal. Just wanting to, just wanting to be great. Just want to be great, man. Looking at Forever Warner, man, and just seeing how good Forever Warner is, and just constantly just studying his game and just seeing stuff like that. Like, he's the next gen of what 
the new example of linebacker it could be. And so, you know, I'm just six seven doing that. So that's what I'm trying to be. You feel me? Trying to do that. So God willing, you know, see how it go. But <laughs> that's really what it was though. Just just really last year and then um yeah. Even before then, though, being confident, uh, I definitely would say it came from AP. Because I wouldn't even just say last year was just a dip in the confidence. Like, I feel like sophomore year definitely was on the higher ups. Um, man, AP definitely helped me. I remember just really going into my spring and just being like, man, offensive linemen are so big. Like, bro, I don't think I could be able to go with them. Like, And then, uh, Man, just seeing how I played and just showing me like I was ripping off blocks better than other linebackers. And so he was like, man, like you really could do it. I ain't bring you here for no reason. Like you're not here for no reason. Like you're doing it. So AP was, I would give the first, first boost of my confidence for sure. Is he a guy you still talk to? You still talk to him much? For sure. For sure. For sure. He's a, definitely a mentor. Same with Coach Marv. Like I would never not want to talk to them, man. They, they, mm-hmm. I would give them the most credit of my co- college career, my development for sure. That first freshman year was so important for me, especially being able to play. Like, you know, a lot of freshmen don't be able to play and definitely not as much as I did as a freshman. And being 200 at like linebacker, like who put <laughs> who has confidence to put a linebacker out like that as a coach, to be honest, and he did it and he started me. Like he didn't care, he, he was like, he felt like I was the best guy for the position and so. Man, I can't I can't not tip my head to him anytime I can. I remember when you were on your official visit to USC and I saw you on the sideline. I was like, this guy's a linebacker? I don't know. Everybody I remember Thule said that to me the first time. Like, like, bro, you really like everybody always gonna say that. And that's why I mean, shoot, that's how it's gonna be, like, until you know, time goes on. Like, so that's how it's always gonna be. You know, people gonna think I play basketball, but shoot, I'll be I'll be chilling now, like I'm good at football. So, you know. Eric, I did a little research knowing that we were going to be interviewing to you today because I wanted to do my research. And I don't know if you're going to remember this, but I found this old video on YouTube called Inside the Mind of Eric Jackson. Uh, <laughs> I do remember that video. <laughs> it's from 2019, uh, so your yes. junior year. And I just watched it, and I found this interesting quote that you were talking about in terms of motivation on the football field, and you summed it up as to make my mom happy. So that is what you outline as your number one motivation when you're out on the football field. That's all you're kind of playing for. Is that still the sole motivation for you, you know, in 2024? Is that still the, like, number one thing that fuels your play out on the field? For sure, number one. For sure, number one. For sure, number one, always. Um, but I, and I think also with that is just like, man, just trying to be the best. For real, I really just want to be the best. Like, you know, that's really it. Like, He's a wild guy. 18 is a wild guy. No lie. I don't know. No lie. I just, I, I really can't tell you. Like, like, I don't know. It's either you just got it or you don't, man. I, I can't even say it. Like, it, I'll be so, everybody always say that to me. Like, EG, K5, we came found him. He can't, K5, my, my boy. He always, we always talk. And so he came to me once. He's like, EG, how you be so crazy on the field and then so calm off the field, though? Like you go make a play and then come joke with me on the sideline. It'd be like, bro, it's just just have fun. But nah, um, I don't know. It's just really just being chill. Like just just really just knowing when to turn it on, man. Just really turning it on. Feeling playing like the world owe you. That's how I'm feeling, man. Playing like the world owe me for right now. So has it always been like that? Has or is I that feel, something that's come year, on? This year, to be honest, man. This year, just really just trying to move like that. So shoot. I know, I don't know if this comparison is going to hit for people in this room, but EG and his intensity kind of reminds me of that scene from uh, Friday Night Lights with Christian Ivory when they're losing at halftime and he's just going crazy on everyone. 
in the locker rooms. Like if the ref gets in your way, you hit him too. You hit everything that moves. <laughs> That's the, the preacher, very quiet, you know, has a different demeanor. But when he's on the field, just an animal comes out and just that Bruh, mentality. I always say that. I'd be like, man, like, yeah, he kind of did that to me on the field. Cause I'd be tripping. Like, I'd be, I don't know what he would have had. What <laughs> Not saying I'd have done nothing crazy, but man, be just on go. Feeling like I'm the baddest MF on the planet, man. Just a man of the arena when I'm on the field. But outside of it, man, talk to me. See me outside, talk to me. Like, I'm hella cool. Like, just open book. I'm hella chill. I had a question. I know your faith is really important to you. And for those that don't know, you are Muslim. Is there any special yeah. significance that you draw from being, you know, a Muslim football player? And do you have any Muslim football players or athletes that you look up to? Um, there's a lot of Muslim athletes actually in the NFL that um, I look up to for sure. And then um, I actually had one of my friends, uh, I'm not going to say we was just crazy close, but we was cool. You know, we didn't talk to each other, kept in touch a lot of times. His name was Awesome Richards. He actually was an old lineman, and he was a Muslim. And I seen him, you know, come from us being in the same masjid praying and to, you know, him going to the NFL. So that was nice. Um, but I think, yeah, really fearlessness of just not fearing nothing but Allah, you know, and just, like, really just praying, like, Praying when everything good, praying when everything bad, like making dua, being grateful every day. Like I really became hella, maybe not good to say hell and religion the same. <laughs> <laughs> but I really became re uh, religious just even more during this um, off season for sure, and then going into the season, I'm just being grateful, feeling gratitude, and just being blessed to who I am. Like just not wanting to be nobody else in the world, literally. Like. Just being happy with who I am, being happy with people that's around us, thinking everybody that's around us, man, just putting good energy into the world, bro. Putting a ton of great energy out there, both on the field, off the field. You're talking about some of the – how a lot of things are different from last year, and obviously you guys are playing better. That I'm sure that helps. But is this the most fun you've had playing football? I know it's only two games, and there's a long way to go in the season. Things can go up and down and everything else. But you just look like you're having so much fun out there right now compared to maybe last year or even in the past before that. And I wouldn't even just say me. Like, the whole team in general, like, we, we you know, and especially defense, like, we, we having fun every day in practice. Like, no lie. Like, if y'all come and see the practice, like, we joke in practice. Like, we joke in the locker room. Like, we jokes everywhere. Like every every time we we round each other all the time. Like we don't ever complain about being around each other. We be happy. Like we just jokes. Like we just have fun with each other. We have business time when it's business time. We pull in full effort. And I feel like a lot of the fun is coming from having respect for each other. That when it's football time, it's football time. When it's time to play aggressive and do what we gotta do, we do what we gotta do. So man, just really um having it as a team in general. Like I can't only say I'm bringing the energy like I'm matching the energy that I'm getting from everybody around me, to be honest. Eric, how important is music in your life and how important is music in setting the tone for you on game days? Music is the instrument of life for sure, especially for me. Um, I say be coming from, you know, coming from Philly, like it's a soulful city already. Like my mom always listened to like slow R and B in general, and then you know we got rap already there, and everything. So um, that, um, and then on game day, it's just like I listen to just old Drake, like Drake when he was hungry, like Drake when he just felt like the world. Oh, I'm like Drake when he really talking. I feel like that that definitely was a change for me for sure. Like on game day, like I've been listening to Drake hella, like just. Um, yeah, yeah, game day really, like, I think that also set the tone for me, like, listening to some music, like, and just chilling and listening and just looking back at everything, especially coming out um, after we go into the locker room and everything. Um, just really just being being in the moment, having fun, like, so for sure, music is definitely important for me. I had a follow-up to this because you're very low-key on social media, and I think you're even off social media right now. I know you, yeah. it comes and goes for you. But a lot yeah. of your social media posts, I'm and referring to X, Twitter, is just songs. You're just posting yeah. songs. 
So are these just something you're listening to or are they kind of a hint into your, your mind when you post this or something you're, is there a subliminal message you're getting? Nah, they, I, I really be having song of the day. Like I just okay. post my songs of the day, like a new song I found or songs that I'm just bumping for the day, like that I'm liking. And then like for, for, I use social media as jokes, like literally like Twitter is just <laughs> jokes to me. So like I post in a, in a sense of just like posting for football and then just posting like some music or how I feel, you feel me? Like with the music and everything. Um, besides that, yeah, like I'm definitely, definitely, definitely just a just a song of the day. Any reason why you've taken a step back from social media right now? Um, for sure, just man, just chilling, like focusing on football. Nothing else really that important. Nothing else that I really care about seeing besides football. Like everything I need is on Thundercloud, my MacBook, and then YouTube. If I'm watching some different film like that or some TV, like. In general, so, so I'm I'm just trying to make football so important for me right now. In general, so having sacrifices that we make, and you gotta make some sacrifices and do some other stuff, you know. And to me, like I don't even double think about it. Like I delete it immediately. It's cool. I didn't did it the whole <laughs> summer, really, just of getting on and getting off. And you know, that's just how I am. I'm worried about football, social media. For like you know, for other people, it's bigger for them, and you know they use it for their platforms and everything. You know, other guys that need to use it in general around college football. But, you know, for me and John, I'm just really trying to play football, to be honest. So. Yeah, I'm a little jealous because we can't really completely log off. We got to follow all you guys to uh, make sure uh, nothing I'm crazy's just, going man, on. See, y'all Commitments, fine. you know, was, top six was, list with all these recruits and stuff. We got we got to stay on. I, I, I'll i be on it. You feel me? <laughs> if, I, I, if it ain't required, it ain't required. So I don't got to do it for real, for real. But y'all. <laughs> It's understandable. <laughs> Part of the occupation, I guess. Well, We're before still... we get out of here, we got we, we got to ask some some Philly questions from you. Um, you know, I live right outside Philly now, about twenty minutes outside. I've asked you for for some food wrecks in the past and stuff, but I, I want to know one question I had was, you know, Philly's known as a sports town, and for better or worse, the sports fans here have a reputation. Yeah, you know, throwing yeah. San, uh, snowballs at Santa Claus, everything else. Yeah. How did growing up in an environment where the fans are so diehard shape you as an athlete? Philly is tough. Philly is a tough place. <laughs> I would not rather grow up nowhere else, though. It made me who I am of being tough. Of you know, I don't never bring racism to it, but it ain't no racism, Philly. Like everybody joke, everybody joke about each other. Like no, no <laughs> lie. It ain't no no discrimination. It ain't no nothing. Like everybody just cool with each other. It's just good mutual relationships with no matter who you are. You just cool with somebody, you cool with somebody. So Philly's so diverse. And I feel like it's Philly versus everybody. So like, <laughs> even, you know how in LA it's like, oh, Compton, like y'all all, like, some people may be cool with people in Compton, people here and there. Like, no, if you from Philly and he save you, like some people say the Valley a part of LA, like, no, if you in the Valley, you're in the Valley. Like I'm, I claim Philadelphia. I don't even claim Pennsylvania. Like I'm from Philadelphia. I ain't from nowhere else but Philly. So, that's how it is, like, and that's just me. It's people, it's a million more of me's that with that mentality. So, like, if they gonna have that mentality, I don't even got the favorite team, you know, with the Eagles. But if they, the, when the Eagles do play, I want the Eagles to win, though. So, that is just, that's for sure with me. Like, I think that brings my love for the city so much is how, how diehard the fans are, you feel me? But I also feel like, you got to treat the fans right. You, you do good. The fans treat you too. We don't got no issue with Jason Kelsey. We love Jason Kelsey. We love him. B <laughs> be tripping sometimes, but we still love him. B. Like, we love Jason Kelsey. We going to love Nick Foles forever. Yep. Forever we going to love Nick Foles. It don't matter if baby. Nick Foles played for the Cowboys. We going to still love Nick Foles. <laughs> Stuff like that, though. Like, Philly always going to love who, who they going to love. It's, it's tough love. But when they do love you, you like them for sure. All right, Eric, sure. you've obviously show, showcased yourself as a incredible ambassador for Philadelphia. So I'm going to have to put you through our patented take it or leave it, which we do at the end of every Helium Boys show. It's very simple. Yeah. I'm going to throw yeah. out something and you either take it or leave it. And then maybe you share an opinion on it. It could be anything mm. random. So like, right. here's an example. Shotgun, take it or leave it. Pickles. I love pickles, so I'm definitely taking that. I eat a lot of pickles, actually, around this household. That's totally – he did not know that was coming, so that's a very <laughs> off-the-cuff take it or leave it from him. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you some things. These are all Philadelphia-related things. Then I have one little bonus question at the end. 
But Eric, are you ready to play Take It or Leave It? Bet, bet, bet. I'm ready. Okay. Eric, Take It or Leave It, running the Rocky Stairs. Take it. <clears throat> You're about I never did it, it but <laughs> I will for sure, I will for sure recommend. Have you still not watched the Rocky movies? I still have not watched Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say this though. Let me say this. A lot of people, more than y'all realize, in Philly did not watch the Rocky movie. Okay, so a lot, a lot of, of young. Let me say younger people my age. Let's say for sure did not watch the Rocky movie for sure. But we did watch State Property. Y'all should know what State Property is. We did watch. Has, it. has everyone watched? Uh, was it Invincible? The uh, Mark Wahlberg was he used the movie? The football yeah, well, that's the movie. Yeah, he was with, with the Eagles. I yeah. did. I watched that. I actually watched that. Some people may have not for sure. A lot of people may have not, but I watched that for sure. All right, Eric. This is a point of contention for some when it comes to the cheesesteaks. But take it or leave it. Whiz. Leave it. Mm -mm. Oh, interesting. It's oh, not about the whiz. I'm, okay. all, I'm I all say, in the whiz. That's like Gino's steak. See, y'all go to a real poppy store, a real corner store that look like y'all not supposed to go there, but you go there. Ain't nobody going to trip on you. I ain't going to say ain't nobody going to trip on y'all, but just <laughs> go there. And you go get some salt, pepper, ketchup. Some people get fried onions. I personally don't. But you get fried onions if you want to. Get some mayo and American cheese with the regular beef cheese steak. You don't put no whiz on top of that. Uh, you put the mayo with the cheese, the salt, pepper, ketchup. You should, when you open your cheese steak, you should just see the pepper with the fried onions. You feel me? You shouldn't see no whiz on top. That's like Geno's and all that. That ain't really, that's like, that ain't really the Philly. That that's the really touristy, like. touristy yeah, cheese steak. Tourist Philly. That ain't, right. that ain't real Philly. I just learned, you know, when I moved here, my roommate is all about the ketchup on cheese. I was like, ketchup? That doesn't make any yeah, sense to me, but yeah. Yeah, tell me. He said he really from Philly. He got the cat, but he do it with Wiz. Uh, she prefers uh, she prefers pro pro provolone instead, actually. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. That's the type of cheese she prefers. She, if it ain't no Wiz, it's good, man. No. Because Wiz, Wiz mean it's on top, right? Yeah. No, nah, yeah, no, nah, ain't no Wiz. <laughs> well, you kind of mentioned this one, but you already said it. So take it or leave it. Fried onions. Sounds like you're leaving it. I, I if it's on the cheesesteak by accident. I'll still eat it though, but I'm not, I'm not going out of my way to get no fried onions though. No. If it happens to be in it, I'm okay with it. it I'm okay. Like he's half in the it. middle. He's in the middle. He's not ordering it, but if it's there, he's he's gonna take it. That's fine. Okay. For sure. Okay. Eric, take it or leave it. The Philadelphia Zoo. Take it. Fire. Went there. Want to go there again? Fire. I was young. Went there as a high school. Went there as. Uh, elementary school that I went there were like my parents. It was fire. I need to go to the San Diego Zoo. I heard that zoo fire. Oh, San Diego is true. LA's got a pretty good zoo too, I will say. I, I have Philly Zoo uh, season passes, so whenever you come back home, uh, just let me know. We'll go. All right, bet, bet. <laughs> sure, I need to go get, get some of them because I'm definitely trying to go to the zoo, especially in Philly. Eric, I'm sure maybe this was a field trip destination for you growing up, but take it or leave it the Liberty Bell. I did go to the Liberty Bell. Take it. Take it for sure. Because that, that's a memorable, like, ding. Like, I, I heard that out here in L.A., but I, every time I hear a ding, I always think of the Liberty Bell. That crack in the Liberty Bell, I always remember that. I, that take it for sure. That's something in Philly that's for sure. That's fire. Okay, we have two take it or leave it's here, and they're both kind of the same thing. So take it or leave it, the Philly Fanatic and Gritty. The mascots. I was about to say, who is that? <laughs> um, Philly Fanatic is the Phillies, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah the green, green boy. Okay, that's he hella cool. He hella funny. Too. <laughs> yeah. And then. And Gritty is the Flyers' new mascot. They got him about five, six years ago. He's orange. Big orange guy. Disrespect bro. I don't even remember. <laughs> is it a bird? No, it's it's uh, like, it's, it's just a creature. It doesn't even. <laughs> it, uh, no, I don't know. No disrespect to bro. No disrespect. All right, all right. Uh, this one is a. I'm giving you two options. You got to take one, and you're leaving the other. So okay. I, I'm, I'm a little worried. I'm gonna pain you in giving you this one, but I have to do it. Take it or leave it. So you're taking one, leaving the other. Meek Mill or Black Thought? Ooh. See, people don't know about Black Thought for a for though. <laughs> like he really liked that. Like he cold. I'm going to go Meek only because Meek really put us on, like, he put us on, like, a Black Thought is cold, though. Black Thought, like, a, 
don't know. I'm thinking of somebody from New York that's probably underrated. Like, I don't know. But Black Thought like that, though. He cold. But Black- Meek put it some. Black Thought is cold. I, I watched that. you probably seen that freestyle where he just freestyled that for like freestyle? 10, 10 minutes. But see, like, see, that freestyle was like, I, I didn't seen that before. Like, my mom, she, my, my mom loved Roots. Like, she loved Roots. So, like, she be telling me all about that. So, um, I feel like, though, uh, I think Meek just put us on. He put us on, man. You can't, you got, we always going to have love for Meek as much as, me be tripping, man. Me be tripping. <laughs> <laughs> be tripping. Lately, he's been tripping a lot, man. I be, I be just putting my head down. I, be I can't never hate me, though. That's it's me. Like shout out me. You know. Shout like, out. It's me. like this rapper from uh, Philly named Core. A lot of people don't know about him, but like people in Philly always gonna love Core because like he, he just, he just somebody in Philly we love. Same thing with like Quilly Mills. Like Quilly be tripping, but like he funny. Eric, yeah. that is the end of Take It or Leave It. I do have one bonus question, like I mentioned. It's actually kind of the first thing you and I bonded over, and that's what's your Wawa order? Because Ooh. you you were like, they don't know nothing about Wawa. Me coming they don't, these okay, guys. they don't know nothing about no Wawa, man. <laughs> so oh, what, what's, God, the, what's the Eric Gentry? What's the Eric Gentry? I walk into the Wawa, I want the Eric Gentry. What are they giving me? Mm. Yeah, y'all got to put me on something because I've had oh, Wawa. And it's Wawa fine. It's, no, I've been there. I've been there, but like it's okay, but okay. nothing special I'm yet. Kicking you off maybe I'm or I'm maybe I'm ordering the wrong thing. I, I need you guys to put me on. Okay, all right. So put them on. Year, I'm coming in the wild wild late at night. I'm 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 hungry. I'm grabbing buffalo quesadilla. Well done. Buffalo chicken quesadilla. Well done. I'm gonna grab strawberry banana shake. That they make fire they got grab. Fire drinks. They got fire drinks. Fire lemonade. They, I'm, I'm they got that. fire drinks, lemonades. I was going to say a lemonade, but that's probably for another night. I'm going <laughs> to grab. Matter of fact, all right, the strawberry shake I could grab, but I'm going to hold on it. So I'm going to get the quesadilla <laughs> and I'm going to get they, they got these cookies and cream like uh, milkshakes oh, that man. come in like a little bottle. Oh my God, they so fire. Get those, get some chips, some candy. I probably get a donut. I ain't gonna lie, the donuts there be good. Like just a glazed donut. Pause, but a glazed donut. You grab one of them. You feel me? You get for the night. For sure. And people, so, and hey, people yeah. have been wondering, uh, you know, if you would be able to put on any weight. I mean, if you're eating this, you gotta be able to put on ah, at least a little bro. bit, right? Bro, for real, for real, <laughs> man, man, that why why I'm telling you, I'd have been, I'd have been up even more on weight if I was in Philly. <laughs> oh my god, I'd have been going to so gotta get a Wawa. In LA, I'll, bring it no to LA. Spot. They there's gonna, go out of business in a there, heartbeat. There's gonna be a USC donor now. It's gonna open one up by beside campus just to help EG, you know, add some man. more weight to, to this, to this frame. Wawa, so good. <laughs> we need the Wawa NIL sponsorship for Eric Gentry. Like it's for just sure. a match made in heaven. And I'm sure it's for you the same way. But it's it's just comforting for me when I go into a Wawa back home. It just when I'm back home, I no, have to go. I always home. every time you go back, you gotta go to your spots that you usually go to because. It's like you ain't gonna go to the Chinese store, go to the poppy store, and go to Wawa. Those are my three spots that I'm gonna go to every time just to feel like I'm back at home. Like it's, it's feel good. All right, you got you're gonna have to talk Lincoln in when you guys go to Maryland. You know, hitting that, hitting that Wawa up at least. Man, I want you to play that Rutgers. Oh my God. <laughs> hey, Maryland has Wawa too. I've been down there a couple yeah, times Maryland, recently. No, Chris Maryland, went Chris know. went to Maryland, so he can tell you. I know where Rutgers at. They got a Wawa near them. Mm-hmm. He knows he I'm see saying he knows every Wawa in his neighborhood. He knows every geolocation shotgun. Who, me? Yeah, you. He doesn't know the no Maryland cap. Wawas. He knows his region. No, Wawa. yeah. I know every Wawa in Philly. <laughs> I know every Wawa near there in South Jersey, near Camden, all, all around there, near Rutgers. There is one in College Park. They just opened one okay, in College Park. Okay. So you're going to be able Ooh, to, okay. to I'm Uber gonna, it. Or if I can't it. grab it, I'm definitely telling somebody to come and grab one for me. <laughs> I'm, getting a, I'm getting that exact order. I might go to <laughs> I might go there during the day. We we want a, a picture sent to us if uh, if this exact order happens oh, I'm in Maryland. I'm take, I won't. Yeah, I won't forget it. I won't forget. Eric, it. Eric Gentry is going to have the game of his life in Maryland because he had Wawa before the game. He's going to have <laughs> nine sacks, 
three pick sixes, and he's <laughs> like, gonna have twenty. The motivation for today, bro. You'd be like, man, I just had a little bit of wild wild. <laughs> I just hit the wild wild before this one, guys. I'm sorry, I had to do it. Like the West Coast, we play, we play uh, Notre Dame before the game. People sending me buckets of wild wild. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting free game. I'm eating some wild wild. Like, dang, bro. It's a superpower. Uh, Give him the wild wild. Sure. Give him the wild wild. I mean, Eric. That is the end of our show. We've had such a great time. This did not feel like an hour. It just blew on by. I hope you had fun. Definitely uh, didn't realize it was an hour. Dang. Yeah, we kept you way too long. We're sorry about that. Right. No, you're good. I'm sorry to cut y'all out, too. I appreciate y'all having me over. I'm at, having me, like, talk, man. This was a good vibe, for sure. I know you got to go film study. Man. Scout scout some, some Wolverines. We'll, we will man. see you in Ann Arbor. And it's going to be fun. We hope all the USC fans come out. See y'all Saturday, man. <laughs> Come out, have fun, and cheer. Because we be looking corny sometimes. Like, can we cheer? Can we, like, as a fan base, be louder than the other fans? Can we please stop being and so bougie? We know we got <laughs> here. We know y'all bought some. Y'all bought tickets to the game. They expensive, maybe, most likely. Cheer. Make the most of it. If I was at a game, I'd be cheering. Uh, hopefully you got you guys heard them in, in Vegas. I thought uh, you know LSU. I thought their fans were a little bit louder. But... It's so loud though. Like if you actually yeah. playing in the dome, so like we did, even when the band started playing, like it was like, ooh, like so we <laughs> we knew it was gonna be loud. Michigan ain't gonna be no dome. It's gonna be a hundred thousand. We trying to see SC fans there. I ain't trying to see no red. I'm trying. I'm at yellow. I'm trying to see some red. All right, so. you, you heard it there, folks. So you better get out to, to Michigan Stadium, cheering on the Trojans, cheering on Eric Gentry. EG, we appreciate you so much for taking the time. We appreciate you. Uh, you know, we love seeing you you playing the way you're playing right now and seeing that big smile after after those big plays because uh, it's so much fun watching you out there. So we appreciate you, man. Appreciate y'all, man. Have a good night. You too. And we'll be back. Well, we're out, actually. We're not coming back. This is it. Healing voice. We're out. <laughs> we're done. He took up all the time. It was great. We don't, we don't need to talk. I don't. <laughs> See ya. Uh...